Welcome back. Here's more of our look back at the summer of protests along this Line 9 pipeline. So we agree that these protesters really don't know a lot about oil or pipelines or Saudi Arabia or really anything. Well, if they know so little about oil and pipelines and where it comes from, if they think in such a shallow way about it that they don't even realize how much oil and energy they use every day, well, why are they protesting? I mean, how can you know so little but care so much, care enough to come and protest and scream and shout? In the case of many of them, even trespass and do other things that get you charged with crimes. I mean, if you knew so little about something, would you care so much that you'd get arrested for it? Well, that was my second epiphany. The reason they know so little but are so stubborn is because so many of them are professional activists, serial activists, who move from issue to issue, protest to protest, even from city to city, a different cause every week, sometimes a new cause every day. They don't know a lot about oil or the environment or whatever tomorrow's topic is. What they truly know about and care about is their tactics. Protests, anarchy, taunting police, and in even some cases, riots. That is, most of them aren't normal people who study an issue and become concerned and slowly study more and more and get worried and get their neighbors and friends involved until a local problem is solved. The opposite. These are protesters of fortune, opportunists, who flit from cause to cause, rally to rally, not to solve a problem, but to wage a permanent war against our culture, especially against our economic system, using any issue as an excuse du jour to be abandoned in favor of tomorrow's flavor of the day. They don't know anything about oil because that's not important to them. All that's important is that they know being anti-oil fits in with their radical counterculture, fight the power, stick it to the man philosophy. They have a general sense that being anti-oil is what good leftists should do, which is ironic because they're actually supporting the theocratic fascist country of Saudi Arabia which is why they hate those questions about OPEC, don't you think? So now let me use footage to prove to you my second thesis, that these are not normal people. They're professionals. You could almost call them actors, just playing a role, playing for the cameras. I mean, take this woman. I recognized her right away. Where do you get your protest sign from? Hi. Nice to meet you. Now that was Trish Mills. I know that because I've seen her before. Remember this? She was the girl who literally took a bicycle walk and locked her neck to the Line 9 pumping station at that break-in back in June. The cops had to cut her out. But Trish has more talents than locking her neck to a fence. Just the other day, here in Toronto, she was part of the anti-police protest in the wake of the shooting of Sammy Yatim, that young man who approached some young girls on a streetcar holding his exposed penis in one hand and a knife in the other, obviously being shot dead by police as a subject worth investigating. But to Trish, it was an opportunity to fight the power. You know, oil pipeline, police shooting, whatever. It's the counterculture that matters. And so she joined the Toronto rally and marched up to the police station and wrote, Cops, pigs, murderers on the wall of the police station. And she was arrested and released. And now she's back in Hamilton with a sign designed by that charity I mentioned before, Environmental Defense. Okay, that's Trish. But do you see this guy? And I think we all recognize the totally perverse irony of the fact that 13 of us, or 18 of us, got arrested that day in Westover. Well, Enbridge continues to destroy communities, to destroy environments, and to commit their flagrant crimes every day without ever having to do what we're doing today. That's Dave Prichitka. He was one of the folks arrested at the Line 9 break-in back in June. Here he is standing with that girl, Alicia Patron, the one who told that native elder to shut up. Prichitka was charged with rioting at the G20 summit in Toronto back in 2010, the one that left police cars torched, windows smashed, and Toronto's reputation blackened a bit. He was charged, but the charges against him were later dropped. But he didn't drop his grudge against society. He's moved from the G20 riots to anti-oil sands trespass, and he's brought other G20 riders along with him, including Alex Hundert, who was sentenced to more than a year in prison for those G20 riots. I, I wondered about that. Is it a good idea to have a rioter as a key organizer for the environmental movement? Is that you, Dave? I'd like to continue the interview. I'm sure we can yeah, meet yeah, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Oh! Hey, Dave, have you been charged with criminal proceedings? Are you going to plead guilty? Dave, how many G20 anarchists are here today? Dave, are you the proud face of the environmental movement?
Dave Prochitka, G20 rioter, accused Line 9 trespasser, is a spokesman for this group of criminal accused. You saw him talking to another reporter there, but why did he run away when I asked him questions about his past conduct? Well, I'll tell you why later. But for now, my point is that these people aren't real. They're not even from Hamilton. Here, look, this girl, Bailey Lamont, she told me she's from London, Ontario. What you, why are you here today? You know what, I've actually been respectfully asked not to talk to you, so I'm just going to respect what people are thinking is. Yeah, we talked for a bit about my standard question yesterday, why she pretends to oppose oil when she's actually just tickety-boo with OPEC oil. She, that's a swear that she bleeped out. Yes, yeah, same as the others, clueless. But who is this Bailey? Well, she's a professional anarchist protester. She shares an apartment with Mike, the guy with the red star earrings who's confused about what oil is in the pipeline right now. In fact, the two of them got arrested together recently in London for vandalism. Now, I go so far as to call it a hobby for Mike. Here he is tampering with train tracks at a blockade and bragging about it on a video that he uploaded to the Internet himself. Look. Ready? All right, so here's a little trick uh, that my friends taught me here. If you want to get the tracks lights going, just go like this. <laughs> now, Bailey is dating a guy named Dan who is at the protest too. He's not from Hamilton either, like most of the other organizers. Dan is a very talented man. Here's his homemade song about Sun News and me. Sun News represents Ezra Levin. Pierre Carl Pellido is full of shit. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be a great Fire classic, don't you think? Anyways, Dan, his name's Dan Baudouin, he has a sense of drama. Here are the pictures he chose for his profile page on Facebook. Guns, Molotov cocktail bombs, masks covering his face, a little bit of anti-sun hatred too, and a, a lot of tattoos. I asked him about those tattoos when I met him. I see you have hate on one set of knuckles, is love on the other? Well, I'm glad to hear it. Yes, uh, the, the hate is for uh, Sun News here. So that's Bailey's fiance. So Bailey, Mike, and the hateful Dan Baudouin are part of a group that they call themselves the Indignants, which is pretty accurately named, I think. They're professional protesters about anything and everything, really. Bailey protests against Monsanto and genetically modified food. Here's Bailey at a political event where she participated in a rendition of the vagina monologues. And here she is in front of a McDonald's, thankfully not doing that vagina thing outside a restaurant. Do you get the feeling that Bailey and Dan and Mike are, are mad a lot at a lot of things, maybe even mad at everything? <laughs> yeah, my spider senses are tingling too. Here's Bailey's Twitter feed joking about making Molotov cocktails. I, I think she's joking, right? Just like Dan was joking with his picture of the Molotov cocktail, right? Here, here's another tweet. Bailey was uh, talking about you. I'll read it. Hey, happy Canada Day. Yay for colonialism, deceit, and theft through displacement and genocide of indigenous humans. Blame Canada. F the flag. Having got to know her a little bit, I I'm pretty sure that one's not a joke. I do believe that she really does hate Canada and what it stands for. <laughs> <laughs> 